Hi, and welcome to the introductory module conversation. I'm joined today with uh, by Pedro Burgos, who is a journalist, and he teaches data journalism at INSPIR in Brazil. Welcome, Pedro. Hi, Amy. Uh, nice. It's nice talking to you. Nice talking to you, too. We um, met a long time ago, and I think you're one of those people who I just always think about because you are a journalist who's trained himself on um, technology and how to stay current because maybe, I don't know, can, can you explain how you got started in that vein? Was it through frustration or necessity or both? Uh, probably I was, uh, I was doing my master's at New York. I was, I was also interning at the Marshall Project, which is a great newsroom. Uh, and I, I was doing, I was the audience editor and I always had to do some monthly reports and basically I taught myself how to, uh, program a bot to do those reports and send, uh, email to the bosses for me. So basically they say, sometimes they say that laziness is the mother of some, some of the inventions. And that's where probably it got me started. And I started teaching myself and teaching others, by the way, uh, as a matter of fact, in 2017, I gave my first, uh, course on introducing programming for journalists. Uh, in the Knight Center for Journalists here oh. at UT. So I'm, I'm back home. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, so it's been kind of hysterical, uh, the conversation around ChatGPT and how it's going to impact news. Um, what do you think are the opportunities or the risks um, uh, with generative AI and news? I think the first uh, impulse is kind of denial, I guess, saying that this technology is not so great and it, it, it makes a lot of mistakes. And the first focus was a lot on hallucinations and how the how the chat GPT is not reliable. Um, and so, if you think about chat GPT as being a replacement for search to augment with facts your story, and but yes, that's that was kind of high P. It wasn't. It isn't a great technology for that. But I think people are coming around to exploring other ways to use the technology uh, as more as GPT and those types of technology as as a bridge to more data or to make uh, more data or transcripts or, or anything like it. Well, with you can explore with with more I would say a natural language with more conversations. And so I think we are just starting to see more projects or more ideas uh, exploring the real strengths uh, of the of the LLMs now, because a lot of time uh, we focus more on, on this knowledge machine. Oh. And I think if we look at it as, as an assistant, as a bridge, I think you you get more results. And how is ChatGPT's Brazilian Portuguese? It's great. It's surprisingly oh, yeah. great since the beginning. Yeah, it's and it's also great for translations. I mean, if you throw uh, an English or any language text, it it probably does a better job than uh, Google Translate because you can also ask like give some examples or something something like it. So it's. It's it's surprisingly good. Yeah, I I feel encouraged because it, it seems like whenever I've done collaborative projects in other countries, that translation component like Google Translate just didn't, didn't you know, at the time, 2018, just couldn't mm -hmm. kind of get over that hump of um, having either stilted language or completely misunderstanding what you were trying to say. But um, time and time again, anecdotally, I hear from people uh, who say that the um, translation in German and in Spanish and now Brazilian Portuguese is quite strong um, and maybe not something to go quite to publish with, but but closer than before. Yeah, yeah. So with with just a bit of editing, uh, it, it makes a, a surprisingly good uh, article. And the the good thing as well is that um it, you 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 we we usually talk only about llms and and text and everything but if you look at the text to speech models like from 11 labs and other other places uh from facebook from meta it's surprisingly good with no accent i mean the the portuguese speaking bots are coming and they they are much more um they talk more fluently than what we have now with Siri or Google Assistant. 
So it's not only text that is good, but also speech is 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 surprisingly good as well. Wow. That's um I'm just thinking I'm putting on my mis and disinformation hat on and thinking that might not be <laughs> good ultimately, uh, particularly in WhatsApp, but but we'll see. Um, you again are at another intersection of journalism and um training student journalists at INSPIR in Brazil. And um I'm wondering the Aside from um, the media, it feels like the academy has sort of lost its mind over ChatGPT. <laughs> and I'm wondering how you're seeing that come to bear at Inspir and anything um, that you're doing to either dispel that or integrate it into the curriculum. Yeah, I think it was the probably the most affected industry right at start because uh, like November the 30th, ChatGPT was available. Like in the coming weekend, you know that the assignments uh like write a paper on something you're not sure if the student is writing himself or herself or if it's using chat GPT. so it was it was a, a a big revolution in terms of how we evaluate how our students uh learn so and still ongoing we're still not sure how to deal with that uh there is no way to catch someone cheating and so i think it's the best the best way for us to go forward is to try to integrate technology. Um, and what I'm doing, so I, I teach uh, um, a course called Machine Learning for Journalists. And the the what I, my curriculum was completely revamped after ChatGPT uh, for a, a number of reasons. Some of them is that the, the technology evolved. So we had to teach someone to say do a classification, so read a text and and put in some tags and categories, and it was like three classes just to teach about natural language processing using Python and a lot of elaborate scripts, and ChatGPT really uh, or using those large language models and those new models, um, it made coding a lot easier. But also it made uh, tutoring or uh, very, uh, I mean, it's every every student now has a tutor uh, 24 hours that can explain concepts that can say, oh, your code is not not working properly because of this or that. So uh, it, I, I, I spent a class just teaching my students how to use ChatGPT. So when you hit a wall and you don't know how to proceed with your code, uh, here, how can you ask GPT for help, for guidance, for examples? It's not just like do the work for yourself. I mean, it, it, it can do that, of course, but it's 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 harnessing the power of, of GPT as a, as a good assistant. Mm -hmm. So I'm teaching a lot of ways that uh, how GPT can be a co-pilot, which is something that I can I hear you more often. Microsoft is 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 appropriating with the term co-pilot. And I think that's how we're going to uh, to use it forward. I, I really like the idea of a tutor, that they have a permanent tutor with them. Um, and it seems like, I, I think because you know technology so well, um, you're less afraid than a lot of other professors <laughs> who have had like a declared a ban or like, um, <laughs> Or failed all of their students because they put it through a GPT checker, and it and it um, and it all came up as as written uh, generatively. But um, I think that's that's interesting. Now you had mentioned to me in a previous conversation um, about a bot that you're writing. You 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 did a bot for um, the Ausfatos. Um, mm -hmm. in, in Facebook Messenger and also Twitter, uh, where somebody would ask a fact, like ask a question about something in, um, that was happening in Brazil, and it would, uh, Fatima or Fatima? Fatima, yeah. Fatima, Fatima would uh, give back a response. Um, so I know you, you're an old hand at chatbots um, mm -hmm. at this point, but um, well, can you explain what you're doing for your class? Yeah, so uh, a chatbot in the prehistoric times, like say before 2022, <laughs> yeah. uh, we have to to program it like explicitly everything. So you, everyone is familiar with when when you call customer service, dial one if you want something, dial two, etc. So a programmer uh, previously would have to uh, understand what would be all the options. Mm -hmm. and, and so Fatima bot and many chatbots would only work if the user would choose the right uh, the right thing, the right question. 
And if if it spells a little bit differently, if it selects another option, it wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. So that was um, uh, that was a problem with many chatbots in many industries, not only in journalism. Right now, what we can do is. Uh, and, and customer service is the industry that is being that that it is being more disrupted more rapidly right now. I think sure. because um, what what ChatGPT or those models do is that you only need the database, like say a FAQ, uh, a, something that is it has all the the questions and answers like uh, well structured. And you train the chatbot to say, look at this database of questions and answers. When someone asks a slightly variation of this, try to find here uh, with the answer. So it's it's closer to a human. So right now we can ask chatbots, we can write and we can program chatbots that are more conversational, that understands natural language, not only options. Uh, and so it, it, it brings a, a lot of, of possibilities. Right now, what I'm doing is not related directly to journalism, but to journalism teaching. What I'm doing is an assistant bot that will read the transcripts of the, the classes. So we, we teach online. So we have the Zoom transcripts of the class. And you, the, the, the student can ask uh, a, a chat bot through Slack some questions regarding the the previous classes and the the bot will go over the transcript and and answer to the best of their knowledge and so it doesn't hallucinate it says it i i don't know if it doesn't know Refreshing, so it, right <laughs> yeah <laughs> as they always should yeah. uh so so i think doing this like making uh the chatbots being a connector between databases and humans, so interpreting human language and, and talking with databases in bot lingo or whatever, it's it's a great use. And, and I'm, I'm eager to try different projects in this vein. Yeah, it's, um, looking back at 2018, do you, do you I, I, I'm, that's around when Fatima came to life, right? Um, mm -hmm. uh, are you, are you thinking, gosh, I wish we would have had this technology back then or just that we've advanced so far? Yeah, I mean, it was uh, it was insane. To, it, it is still insane. I, I mean, people don't realize how how advanced those, those things are. I, I mean, um, the way that it can interpret uh, any kind of questions and, and, and try to connect with the knowledge. It's it's really amazing. And I think we, if we had this these things uh back then in 2018 we, we would do like a better job at at those chatbots i think it's still there are a lot of times but i think in a if if i can go uh, further on that i think uh there is a possibility of the job of the role of journalism being completely re revolutionized in a way that um uh, if if I organize a data a database, a lot of uh, like transcripts or or whatever, and I create a chatbot so the the reader of the news can instead of reading what I wrote about what I think about the data, it can ask direct questions on the data itself, and a chatbot would uh, answer. So when we write a story in journalism, when you go to a newsroom, we kind of read the raw data, interview people, and decide what we put in the top, what we put in the headline. But sometimes readers have different, not only different perspectives, but different questions. Yeah. So they don't, don't need to go, maybe they don't need to go to the fifth paragraph or something to gather information. Maybe we as journalists can, can build those bridges between uh, the knowledge that we gather will still be there. Still be a, a huge necessity of 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 someone gathering the data, uh, cleaning, putting in context. But the 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 this, the product itself, like the text, uh, for instance, I think it can be changed in many ways uh, with the reader adding inputs or questions or things like that. That is going to be interpreted by things like GPT or or those sorts. I think we're going to have to have a monthly conversation about <laughs> what what news could look like because that is the biggest thing um, on my mind. I mean, yes, the technology has has um, 
has inspired that, but it's clear the public wants to interact with information in a very different way than journalism has presented it. Um, and so it is going to be enormously disruptive and might be why everyone is clutching their pearls around, oh, we, we can't let ChatGPT into our newsroom and or in the classroom. Um, it's so... Uh, helpful to talk with you, Pedro, because you have such a command and understanding of the technology and journalism, which makes you a very powerful combination. Um, I think for your students are very lucky and we're glad to have you on the call today. Thank you. Thank you so much.